welcome to the Athlete Profile Show with me, Chris Stafford. Well, basketball fans are in for a real treat. They will immediately recognize the skills of Team GB Olympian Temi Fagbenel. And those who have yet to know her will soon discover that she's a multi-talented and a multifaceted woman. Her relentless drive to win on the court is only matched by her ambitions on the catwalk, in the boardroom and on a set. It soon becomes apparent that she is not content with just her sporting achievements. Her other passions also fuel her drive, which align with her desire to inspire young girls and women, to encourage them to create their own pathway to realize their own dreams. And Temi's story is by no means ordinary. That's not her style. She's always been a high achiever, from NBA to Olympian, USC to Harvard. One of 12 children born to Nigerian parents in Baltimore, Maryland, Temi was raised to believe in herself, to be a confident woman. She's always been told she was beautiful, and she exudes that inner strength, which she hopes will encourage girls and women to feel body positive themselves. She is, in short, a role model for all girls and women in sport and in life, an example of how women can orchestrate their own inspirational journey. And it's easy to be inspired by Temi. And now, with the Paris 2024 Olympic Games her main focus, Temi is determined to complete some unfinished business. Team GB missed out on qualifying for the Rio and Tokyo Games, which is still an open wound. And while Olympic qualifications have just begun, she's also jetting back and forth to play for her league team at Kokorova Basketball in Turkey. All this while running a fledgling business, along with her other off-court pursuits as a model, actress and UN women partner. I caught up with Temi ahead of her first Olympic qualifying game against Greece. Temi, hi, welcome to the program and thank you for taking time to do this out of your, what is a very extraordinarily busy schedule right now. <laughs> Hello, thank you and you're welcome. Thank you for having me on here. Because you were telling me before, we were, as we record this on November the 11th, you're playing a game tonight as a qualifier for Eurobasket 2023 and, right. and against Greece in Manchester, England, and then you're zipping over to Estonia to play. So how many of these qualifying games have you got? So for now, it's those two, and then uh, we might have some more in the future, but we know we're focusing on what we have for now, which is the Greece one today, tonight, and then Estonia in a few days. So they come up in 2023, Eurobasket. In the meanwhile, of course, you've got the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. You're dual citizen with US and British, of course. Yes. This must be, you know, home for you to be able to have the Commonwealth Games in in your backyard. Is that as big as London 2012 or is it getting there? It's definitely around there. You know, obviously the Olympics is a different animal completely. Um, and that was just an amazing experience to have been, you know, a part of that in London in 2020, uh, 2012. So obviously the Commonwealth Games is another great opportunity to, to represent the country. And so it's, it's definitely up there, but I would say the Olympics, the, you know, was, was such an amazing once in a lifetime experience, you know, so I'm very grateful actually for both. Is Eurobasket a stepping stone to Paris? Because we know that the GB failed to qualify for, for Rio and, and Tokyo, which was, must have been hugely disappointing for you all. You're hoping, I'm sure, to set the record straight and get back on the Olympic roster in Paris. Is the Eurobasket a stepping stone as a qualifier for that then, Temi? Absolutely a stepping stone. So at this point, you know, we have all over the hotel that we're staying at, you know, banners that say the road to Paris. So, and, and that's something that we all have in our minds, you know, that's the, that's the next goal for us. So yes, we've got to take it day by day, but we understand that we have a common goal in, in achieving the next Olympic. So what is the challenge that's different then from qualifying for, for Rio and Tokyo? What, what didn't work then that you're hoping to put right now with the squad that you currently have? Well, I mean, you can't really pinpoint what, what didn't work in the past and what we'll do different now because we've got you know a completely different team and every year every time we play we just you know endeavor to do our best and so we can talk about what didn't work but I would like to focus on what you know what we have now and and our goals now you know and so 
it's still actually very painful <laughs> at this point. <laughs> um, the, especially the last, uh, the qualification, Olympic qualifiers, we were so close and we just couldn't do it. And so this, this is our time, you know, we really need to figure out a way to achieve our goals this time. Yeah, it's still, sorry, it's still an open wound, but there is. Yeah, time. really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, no, actually, it was closed. It was closed there before you. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, well, let's put a band Before you split it open. <laughs> let's put a band aid on that then. Yeah, yeah let's, <laughs> let's try this again. <laughs> and move on, because I want to just jump back to Birmingham and the Commonwealth Games in 2022, because that is a big deal, obviously, for Commonwealth yeah. countries. But it's a different format, isn't it? Right. Yes, it, it, it is. Um, actually, this will be my first Commonwealth Games, so I am not too sure how it would work. But I know that obviously Commonwealth countries are will be completely different from the you know who is in the Olympic tournament. So it should be really interesting. Actually, I know Nigeria is going to be there. And I'm also Nigerian, so that would be very interesting if I get to play that country as well. Yeah, and, and then I'm, I'm wondering, you know, when, you know, because obviously Nigerian uh, family and the American and British, so, mm-hmm. you know, where this fits with your allegiances when it comes to like a Commonwealth game <laughs> when Nigeria is playing or an Olympics when the right. US is playing. You're right. Yeah, no, it's difficult actually because I, I just, you know, I feel connected to all three lands and you know cultures as well so i just you know if i'm playing for great britain that's who i have you know who i have to support um but i will always have you know a connection to nigeria and you know obviously the usa where i I grew up there i went to school there but i would say the order would be nigeria and england and britain first and then USA afterwards. Like, okay. I don't really, I don't generally support the USA because they're they're too powerful. <laughs> right, I love a good underdog. Sport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like how you've chosen to play for different countries as well. And you know, an up and coming league like in Turkey now that you're out there with. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Kukurova. It's Chukurova. Chukurova. Okay. Chukurova, Chukurova basketball. Yeah. But how mm-hmm. did you come up about that? Uh, choosing them then. Tammy. Well, yeah, I mean, first, two, when you leave um, university, when you stop playing basketball in university, you find an agent, basically. And so I was lucky enough to have a friend who helped me secure an agent fairly quickly. And this agent helps you, you know, get into teams, play in teams overseas. So I played in Poland, first of all. And then... After Poland, I did a little brief stint in Turkey, I believe. And I, then I went to Spain and then I played in Italy last year. And now this, I'm back, I'm back in Turkey. And so it's just depending on, you know, what my goals are, what kind of team I want to be on. For me now, as I get older, it's very important that I have the sun, you know, so as that really affects my mood. And so I said, I need to, I really want to play in somewhere warm. And so my agent started looking at places, you know. That were warm, so Russia was definitely out of the <laughs> equation. <laughs> Poland was out of the equation, and Turkey, Italy, you know, places like that were on were on there. So I chose a very good place um, in Chukarova because it's in Mersin, Turkey, and that is yeah. just just sunny year round. It seems. Um, how about the language? How do you deal with that? Yeah, no, that is, has been so difficult. Actually, I did. I didn't realize how much I missed being around English speakers until I left Turkey and came to the UK, you know, for this um, qualifying period. Um, and everyone, I could speak with everyone. I could, everybody understood what I was saying. Whereas in Mersin, it's just like a struggle. You know, you have to use your phone always. You're, you're on Google Translate the whole time, basically. Um, I'm still trying. I'm actually, I, I love to learn the languages of the countries I go to. I just feel like... You know, I'm in their country, so I can't expect them to speak English. So I, I will, you know, endeavor to speak as much Turkish or Italian or Spanish as, as I can in order to make that, you know, just make it a bit easier for both sides. So you have a few words now in your vocabulary. Of Turkish. Oh, evet. Evet means yes. So yes, evet. Okay. I do, I do. Okay. <laughs> and so what, what is that lifestyle like then? And, and the, when you compare the, the other nations that you've played for, Temi, how does that compare in terms of the, you know, the facilities, the, the standard of play obviously is one thing, the coaching, the resources, the staffing. Right. What's the infrastructure like in Turkey? 
Well, it varies from country to country, really, and also from league to league. So we have, you know, depending if you're playing in the in the top league, then you you generally have better facilities, better coaching, better salaries. And so I'm playing in the top one. No, actually, the second Euro Cup is the, like the second top league, but it's it's really competitive anyway. And my team is a great team. The owner has decided to invest a lot in this year, and so we have top caliber players, you know, playing in the WNBA and everything. So. It just depends on what the owner decides to do, if they want to shell out money or not, you know? And so I'm lucky enough to have a top facility, top caliber facility to play in this year. And do you have some other, you say, international players in the league? Yeah, like, no, yeah. We have like a whole WNBA roster on my team this year. It's, oh. it's fantastic. So we, we're expecting big things this year in terms of winning championships. Obviously, You've got those responsibilities and you've got national responsibilities for Team GB, of course. But would you get much international travel whilst you're with the Turkish League? Do they, do the, do the league travel much international? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I said, we, we play for in the Euro Cup League. And so, you know, a lot of European countries are within that league. And so our pool right now, we have two Polish teams and one Belarusian team and so we have to travel to these countries to play against these teams so once we get back to Mersin we head out and, and we go to, to Poland to play the two Polish teams that we have to, to play in the, in the pool so I love to travel basketball has been such a passport for me I've always said this and it's it's just opened so many doors and it's given me the opportunity to experience different cultures and expand my horizons, expand my mentality. And it's hard to be a bigger and travel as much as, <laughs> as I do, you know, like yeah. w w you just can't, you have to really, you're forced to, you know, look inside and challenge your own mentality when you travel so much. And of course, being immersed in all those different cultures, I would have thought would really suit you because you studied an anthropology, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So it's right up my alley and I'm, yeah. I'm just <laughs> everywhere I am. I'm curious to learn more about why people are the way they are, you know, their languages, their cultures. Why do they do these things? Why in Turkey do they, you know, why are women so quiet? Why in Poland are, you know, the people in small town Polkowice so timid and then why don't they look me in the eye? And, you know, just different. Yes. It's just very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. When you get any spare time, when you're not training and playing, what kind of things do you enjoy doing then to immerse yourself in the local culture? Well, I have many other interests, um, one being acting, actually, and modeling. And so I try and do some of that in each country I, I'm in. It's hard because, you know, after practice, after a game, the last thing you want to do really is anything but sleep. So when I do find some energy, you know, I, I try and reach out to people within the area and see, you know, if they want to collaborate on any cool projects or anything. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely very hard to, to do a lot of that. So you, I, I read this about you, that, you know, you, you, you enjoy your modeling and, and getting into acting as well and a small business. You've got a lot of strings to your bow, Temi. So right. <laughs> when, you know, not like, you know, a lot of athletes, they're wondering when they come to their, at the end of their competitive career, what they're going to do. But you've mm. got things lined up. A lot right. of things on your on your bucket list. What what are you most passionate about after basketball? I'm actually most passionate about empowering young women, young girls to be their best selves. Like I've realized this over the years that this is what I I actually enjoy doing this and seeing, you know, a once shy or timid girl really step into her own and become confident and understand that she she can do what she wants is just an amazing feeling for me. So I'm just trying to see how I can do that more often, you know, whether it's through social media or face-to-face or -face, as much as I can while doing basketball, I try and do that. Well, you have a tremendous platform, of course, within the sport, but I want to rewind a little bit now, Temi, because you come from obviously an interesting background, multicultural background mm -hmm. what was the passion that was driving you as a child because 
you come from a large background that could have been potentially very competitive, was it, in right. terms of sport? Definitely. Yeah, no, still is, um, you know, I would say in a healthy way. But for sure, every, anything we did, you know, was a composition from Monopoly to, to tennis and, and debates. Uh, it's just somebody has to fight. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be, you know, some, something to, to fight for. So it's, it's just that's what I grew up with. And it's definitely carried me throughout my career and given me that fire. Just to like, it's somewhat of a chip on my shoulder being like, I'm confident in my skills. I'm confident in myself. And what do you have? You know, I, I like to, it's kind of like a little tussle for me. So I, I enjoy that. Did you find you had to, you know, fight for your position then with, you know, amongst your siblings in, 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 a, in, a, in a way? Not particularly, not particularly, no. Maybe others did, but for me, no, it was more like healthy competition, like, mm. I'm very secure in who I am. And so win or lose, I'm still kind of happy, you know, not happy, but I'm still secure in, in my worth. So it, was, it wasn't really about fighting for a position per se, because also the age range spans quite widely within my family. The oldest was he passed away, but he would be 50, 51. And the youngest is 13 or 14. I really lose track of ages at this point. But yeah, like, and we're all, we all fall within that range. And it's like, there isn't really room to be, you know, fighting for positions per, per se with, you know, your 40 year old brother or something. <laughs> um <laughs> Well, obviously, th that stood you in good stead because it's given you that determination, that drive. You have, you know, great awareness, body awareness, self confidence, body confidence, all of those things to inspire young girls. Are you mindful of that when you do your modeling and you get into other things mm. off court? Absolutely. Definitely mindful of that. And one thing with me, I've, I've always tried to just be as natural as possible and to try and embrace myself wholly for, for who I am. So especially within African women or young girls, um, the one big thing is, is wearing wigs and like extensions and stuff. Like mm -hmm. it's all good to, you know, play around with the hair or whatever. But one main thing for me is kind of embracing yourself as you are. So embracing your natural beauty, embracing your natural hair. And so this is what I you know, embody in, in my photo shoots or whatever I do. Like, I don't really like to, to talk about it. This is probably one of the first times I've, I've said it, verbalized it, like being an advocate for natural hair or whatever. I just like to show it and show young girls, this is beautiful as well, you know, so you can also do it if you choose. Have there been any setbacks though with, with so much confidence and in, you know, and, and a pathway with your career that's, it just seems being tiled with gold along the way. You've not had any real setbacks in terms of you have a career path and you've decided that's the way you're going to go. Have you had any cultural, any difficulties because of your cultural backgrounds, your different cultural backgrounds? Interesting. Any difficulties because of my cultural backgrounds? When you said setbacks at first, I, de I thought of physical setbacks, which I have experienced Um in terms of injury. So I've, I've definitely experienced that, that pain and the, you know, inability to move and, and even questioning whether or not I was going to continue playing basketball. Um, I was very lucky to, to do so. But in terms of culturally, mm, I really can't think of any setbacks per se. You know, I like to have the mentality of, uh, I can do what I set my mind to, you know? And so I probably have had some challenges or whatever, but I've always tried to, you know, overcome them in whatever way I can, you know? Yeah. Um, growing up in England, actually, I've, I saw that a lot of the time when somebody would experience a setback or something that they initially thought that they couldn't do, 
they would wither away, you know, and then just give up really, really easily. And I just thought, why was that? Like, so what kind of mentality is that? Like, find a way, find a, a solution, you know, use your mind, use your brain and, and figure out how to get what you want. And so that's, that's always been me. So that would be one of your mottos, find a way. Yeah, find a way. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> I was curious when I put that to you, in terms of, you know, culturally and racially and being mm. a woman as well. Oh, you know, right. Of or, course. In a combination of all of those things, you know, some girls would find challenging in today's time. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I guess I just maybe pushed that out of my mind. But now that you talk about it, like I went to Blair Academy in the States, which is a prep high school. And it's, it's a majority, you know, white school, um, which was fine. But you would definitely, especially in America, you know, you have, there are undoubtedly racial tensions or whatever. And coming from England, it was very interesting just to see how that was kind of working, how that was playing out. And it's funny because I wasn't really perceived as, you know, black American because I'm coming from England. I have my accent. And so I'm already in a different kind of level according to the Americans, which was very strange to me. But I'm going to call it a mid Atlantic <laughs> accent, Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <because I> think <laughs> <it is. laughs> okay. But yeah, definitely had my fair share of, of, you know, pushbacks, whether it's because I was a woman or whether it's because I was black or whatever. But I don't like to, I just don't focus on those things, you know? Yeah. I, I just don't en enjoy that. <laughs> no, of course not. What, what did your parents teach you? What were the biggest lessons they taught you? You know, when, when they set you off in the world internationally as well. I mean, there must have been some strong lessons to make you the woman that you are. Right. Um, one thing my, my dad has always said was just be, be a, be kind, be a kind person. Like, and, and that's really stuck with me throughout my life because there's so many times where I don't want to be kind. You know, I don't think somebody deserves in quotes my kindness because of how they, you know, acted to me or whatever, but being kind never fails, you know, being acting out of love never fails. And it's just, it, it's, it's good for you. It's good for the world. It's good for the person you're, you're, you know, communicating with. And that should just be the base. And so that's, that's definitely helped me throughout my life. And also for my mom, just instilling the pride in, in myself and my culture and always telling me that I'm beautiful. This actually was important for me, you know, growing up as a very tall, you know, black woman. I was six, three when I was 13. So, you know, very insecure in, in many ways, but also hearing, you know, these words from my mom saying that I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful. I really just took that, you know, I imbibed that and it became me. Like I am beautiful. Nobody can tell me otherwise. Yeah. Um, and so this, I'm just very thankful for that. And I just, I carry that with me wherever I go and, and, and standing up straight one time, like, you know, I was with my coach. He said, Oh, tell me you're hunching. This was when I was like 14 years old. You're hunching over. And, it's, and I was so surprised to hear this. As soon as he said that, I stood up straight and I've never looked back since then. And <laughs> so, you know, just different people throughout my life has, you know, have helped. That's absolutely awesome. Um, well, clearly it stood you in good stead. And, and you also, I get the sense that you really are passionate about sharing your journey and sharing, you know, the strengths that you have with young girls. Um, yeah, that, that is very, very dear particular. to you. Yeah, and I'm wondering when the playing career ends. I'm not retiring you anytime soon, Tammy. <laughs> Way too much to do. <laughs> but when that day does come, inevitably, do you think you're going to have so many skills? Do you think it's going to be difficult to choose where where you prioritize because you're passionate about so many things? Absolutely, and it's even proving difficult to you know today. I have uh, always been somewhat of an indecisive person uh, and I'm always someone, you know, who wants to try everything because you have that we know of this one life. And so why not in my mind, you know, do everything that you can. I, I really want to experience as much as, as I can. So I think this will pose a problem, but 
I'll find a way to figure out, you know, I'll, I'll find a way to do it. How about you? <laughs> you probably have a, your own team around you to enable you to do right. it. Right. To go yes. on modeling and acting and, and the business. T- tell us a little bit about the business b- the idea that you have before you go. Yeah, so it's um, it's a premium food food business, um, and actually I, I'm working on it with my business partner, who is a good friend of mine, um, and it's a Russian. It's got Russian roots. Um, and he's Russian as well, and we're kind of trying to put to the world this idea of you know healthy quality food, premium food from Bashkirian honey, which is you know you know, cited as better than and more rich, nutritionally dense than Manuka honey to Italian chocolate and and different types of teas from China from all over the world. And so it's all very kind of niche and premium. And so I'm I'm very excited to to launch actually. And so that's in keeping with your probably your own habits, you know, with nutrition. uh, Oh absolutely. Right up my alley. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that are right up your alley, Tammy. <laughs> One busy woman. <laughs> I'm glad you've taken the time to, to stop by and talk to us, and I hope you'll come back again because there's so much more to tell of your story. Yeah, there actually is. We just uh, scratched the surface. We but did. thank you for this opportunity. Well, well, I'm not going to let you go without you having the final say of <laughs> what other messages would you like to share, and particularly with young girls. Yeah, young girls, young girls, young girls. I hope you're listening. I've always, you know, championed young girls and I just want you to have confidence in yourself. And there's, there's, there's one thing I've, which is really annoying. Like there's, there's one thing for me to say to you that you're beautiful, but that being beautiful shouldn't even be the goal, you know, especially not on the outside, you know, it's that inner beauty or as cliche as it sounds that matters. And one thing I've always said is that if people don't accept you for who you are, no, no, no. If people don't like you because of what you look like on the outside, you do not need those kind of people in, in your life, you know, because why would you want such superficiality in your life? You know, like what you are on the outside doesn't matter at all. So try and, you know, find those friends who appreciate for what you bring in the inside, what, you know, what kind of personality you have and you know, your laugh or something like that. So you'll get there. Um, keep on keeping on and yeah, just be kind. Just be kind. Three key words then to take away. <sighs> Most value from be- having a career in sport, Tammy. Three key words. Hmm. Well, I've always loved the phrase relentless persistence. That's something that's carried me throughout my um, career. Relentlessly persisting. Relentlessly means without tiring, <laughs> basically. You keep on, keep on keeping on and persist. You, con- you know, you persist, you, you continue, you don't stop. So doing that relentlessly, that will take you far. And so that's two words. Let me think one word, one more word. Hmm. It has to be love. Oh, I love. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Do everything with love. Yes. With kindness and love. With kindness and love. Yes. That's a great message, Temi. Thank you so much for stopping by. Come back and see us any time so that we can continue this story, please. Thank you. My absolute pleasure. And the very best of luck in those qualifiers. Thank you. Go, GB. (laughs) And we'll be following Temi's journey all the way, hopefully, to Paris. So stay tuned here at Wiz Sports. In the meanwhile, you'll find the links to Temi's social media in the show notes accompanying this episode, which is online at wispsports.com. And you can, of course, follow us on our social media channels at Wiz Sports, where you can leave your comments, questions, and suggestions for guests for this and any of our other shows here at Wisp Sports. And whilst you're on your podcast app, we always appreciate a review or a rating because that helps others find us. Until the next time, thank you for listening. 